Hey guys, I want to go into part four of my go-to dashboard demonstration example of how to build it. This one can get a little maybe technical, maybe, depends upon how you view it. We're going to look at Power BI measures built using DAX. As always, let's just dive right in. And always, if you like this, you can hit the subscribe button somewhere. This is our dashboard. And what we saw before is importing the data. We're left with data that just looks like a nice big table of numbers. But there's no percent completes. There's no formulas. If you actually want to know what the percent is for concrete, you know, if this was an Excel file, you have to go put some sum ifs, some equations. But in Power BI, that's not what we do. To build graphs, and have analytics, we use measures. Measures are all these little calculation things off on the side. They're effectively like putting in columns onto your table of data, but columns that are calculated based upon maybe some pre-selected filters of your data. Here we've got our actual to date, we've got our forecast. Well, where's that coming from? Well, let's just click actual. So we actually want to generate a curve that goes from zero to where we are today. Here it is, and this is the DAX code. We need to do some calculations. That's what measures are all about. Here, you want to make a specification of, we want some numbers up to the data date, and then above the data date, we want nulls. You do the same thing in Excel graph because you don't want to actual curve would drop down to zero and see the line continue. You just want it to stop at the current date. And so we've got a little condition in here. And to build that condition, we're just saying that as long as this A is less than or equal to A1, then calculate our percent, which is just a total to date divided by total. A is our total to date. Calculate using some variable of saying, hey, let's just go sum everything up into a current date, because wherever you are, you don't want to sum everything before that. And using a condition or, where the data set is either actual or forecast. So that will be the running total that will generate the total hours from zero to whatever the total hours is, incremental for every period, for both the actuals and the forecast, be everything in there, um, up into, up to a specific date. Now the total at the end is gonna be variable B and we're just gonna calculate a sum and we're not gonna put in this condition for having to be today or prior. Here we just wanna say what the total is and so we're just gonna say, hey, just sum up all value is my hours. So sum up all my hours total for actual or forecast. Our condition is gonna be we're going to call A1, and A1 is just going to be looking at the actuals. And so we're going to sum up the actuals, and obviously where um, A becomes bigger, that would be after the data date. And so we can put a little condition in there. That's where we get our actuals from. So that series, come on, is generating that little black line. We actually go look at our... Um, our visual, here we are pull, pulling in some line values where we've got our early plan, we've got our actuals, we've got our forecast, we've got our late. Again, those are all coming off measures. We looked at our actuals, forecast measure, almost exactly the same as the actual, but here we're putting in a little condition saying where it's bigger or equal, generate our percent, otherwise drop a null, and so then you get a nice little percent series at the end. and. We can format that in special ways. We can use a, um, yeah, if we go into our uh, format tools, you can go and actually go look at um, how the shapes are generated. Actually, it's not the shape, it is. Um, actually, I'm not sure which one it is. Here it is, okay. So based upon your data series, so I've made, brought in some line values of ACP early, the actual, the forecast, or the spent, you select which one you want, 
and then you can adjust uh, some of the properties of it. So this would just be a solid line. Obviously, the forecast has a dashed line, so there or dotted, and so that's actually where it's coming from in their formatter. Some other values, all our histogram values. Again, these are measures. All the histograms up here. These are a little bit more simple because we just want a sum of value, sum of value for a current week. So now we're not doing a cumulative value. This is just for that week. What's the sum? And here we are, just some actuals for a particular week. And these are all done exactly the same way. That's the actual histogram. This will generate the forecast histogram and just naming. You can get smart with naming. I've just said histogram weekly forecast. It fits me and I can just drag it into, um, yeah, I can just drag it in here. These actually would say the histograms. And the plan, so here we are, just say the plan. This is again one of the nice features of how we've structured our data. Always look at how you're structuring your data. We've just put it into series type. I can go add a histogram for every series type that I've put in here. So you need to know what you're putting in your data to get your graphs out the end. That's pretty much it for now. The future extensions that we want to talk about are more related to some of the strategy of why. Why did I build this? How does it fit into our construction world? How does it fit into our concepts of digital strategy? Because you want to be smart with how you do things. And if you build something that's not really embedded in how you work, well, maybe you need to look at how you're working or change your digital products. Specifically, we want to look at Jura. I'm not sure if I'll actually be able to get there because we want to talk about specific activities. So if I've got an activity in here, activity nine, that has a key date of finishing 8th of June, we wanna look at the work process of how we get that number, and that can be facilitated in the world of Jura and Agile, as well as just open communications with your team. Given that, obviously, if you like the videos, hit subscribe. There should probably be several more of these, and I'll probably finish off this one fairly soon. And outside of that, thanks a lot, guys, and have a good day.